All right, everybody, welcome back to Easy Fish Tanks. Today we are going to be covering the ultimate beginner's guide for your betta fish. So betta fish are really popular. They're pretty much at any fish store you go to, and they're relatively inexpensive. So let's take a look at what you need to get started to have the perfect setup for your new betta fish. Uh, so first off and first most, let's talk about their temperature requirements. So the temperature requirement is going to be between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. And price wise, they range anywhere from five dollars and up. I, you know, I'm sure you could find some that are 50, 60 bucks for some of the really fancy ones uh, for tank size and requirements. This is pretty important. So a lot of people think that you can just keep your beta in a little bowl like you see them all the time advertised that you can keep them in a bowl or a vase or some other kind of container. This isn't going to be great for your beta fish. What you're ideally going to want is a five gallon fish tank or larger. Now you can buy starter kits for fish tanks at most of your Petco's and PetSmart's. Those will be five, 10, 20 gallon fish tanks that come with everything that you need to get started. But we're going to go over, if you don't want to get a starter kit, what you're going to need to select to give your beta the optimal home. I personally like to buy things separate. I like to be able to pick out the specific brands for each unique item that my fish tank needs because after 20 years in the hobby, I have a few brands that I prefer over others. Uh, and then also for a good rule of thumb here is larger is always better for your aquarium. So five gallon, that's your bare minimum. I have a bait and a five gallon, perfectly content, perfectly happy, but I'm also an experienced fish keeper. So it's a lot easier for me to manage the water chemistry in the tank. So if you can go larger, I always recommend going as big of a tank as you can afford and you have place for. The more gallons that you have, the more stable your water parameters will be. So if you have a stand that's strong enough and room, I always recommend going as large as your budget will allow. Additionally to that point, horizontal or long tanks like your 20 long are going to give the fish more area to utilize and they tend to as they tend to be back and forth swimmers rather than going up and down in the water column. So a longer tank is more ideal than a deeper tank because like I said, they are gonna use that horizontal movement more than they're gonna use vertical movement in the tank. So it gives them more area to utilize. An additional benefit to a longer tank means that you have more surface area. Now, the surface area of your tank is where your gas exchange happens. So a longer tank has a bigger footprint more water surface is available in that tank. And that's basically gonna allow your tank to have more gas exchange, which is gonna keep the water well oxygenated, oxygenated for your friend. You're also gonna want a tank lid. Betas are known to be jumpers. So a lid for your tank is ideal. Now, I have a beta that I've had for a long time with no lid on it and it's been fine, but there are so many reports of betas jumping out and people finding them dried up on the ground. And that's obviously not going to be ideal. If you've gone through all this hard work to build a great tank and you got to attach your fish, you're going to want to keep them safe. So I always recommend to get a lid for your fish tank. If you bought a starter kit, it most likely came with a lid. But if you're going to buy them individually, this will be an additional cost. And they're not necessarily cheap. And the reason I recommend a lid again is it's going to keep your friend from jumping out of the tank and meeting its untimely fate. And it's also going to help reduce the rate of water evaporation. So if you have a lid on top of your tank, your water evaporation is going to be substantially less, which means there's less maintenance for you, less top offs. And all around, it's, you know, those two benefits alone should be enough reason for you to get a lid. Now, the next thing you'll need, they tend to get overlooked for betas since we see so many videos of them living in small bowls and vases and with, you know, no equipment inside of it but you're gonna wanna get a heater for your new tank. If you went with a starter kit again, this is gonna be included and the heater they give you should be the appropriate size for the tank that it came with. If you're like me though, and you like to buy your things separate, you're gonna need to make sure you buy the right watt heater for the size of your tank. So heaters come in different wattage and that's how much energy they have to heat up the water inside the tank. So there's a general rule of thumb for aquarium heaters. And that rule of thumb is that you need five watts per gallon of aquarium water. 
So here's an example. Let's say you ended up, you said, I don't want a five gallon tank. I want a 10 gallon tank. And you're buying everything by yourself. Then you're going to want to purchase a 50 watt submersible, submersible heater. Uh, and for a five gallon, honestly, you're just going to get a 50 watt as well. That's kind of where the overlap is. And I also strongly recommend you get a heater that has adjustable, an adjustable top. So you can set your desired temperature versus the heaters that come just stock and you're not able to adjust anything on them. I like to be able to dial in my temperature because sometimes it can range depending on the ambient temperature of the room. And remember, you're going to want to try to maintain a tank temperature between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. Another tip I have for you for heaters is all your heaters have to be submerged in the water. I see posts all the time, where should I have my heater, yada, yada, yada. You need them down into the water column, preferably at an angle. And that way the heat dissipates easier and you get a more even uh, heat throughout your tank without stressing out the heater too much. And remember when you're doing water changes to either turn your heater off or make sure you don't drop the water level down below where the heating element on the heater is or else you're going to burn it out and you're going to have to buy another one. And you might not notice this happens and you'll have problems down the road. So we're also going to need to add filtration to our tank. Now it is possible for experienced fish keepers to run and maintain a filterless beta tank, but it requires much more care and diligence. And you're also going to need a really thick substrate and a lot of plants in the tank and floating plants as well to absorb all that excess nutrients that the filter isn't taking out. So for the sake of this video of being a beginner's guide, let's just get a filter for your tank. That way you don't have to worry about that. As for your filtration, it's important to remember that betas do not tolerate a lot of flow or current in the tank. They don't want to be knocked around in the tank. That's why I personally think that the best type of filtration would be a sponge filter. Sponge filters are very simple filters and the way they filter is by the means of mechanical and biological filtration, which Put simply means that beneficial bacteria will live on the sponge of the filter and the sponge will also work to capture any floating de debris in the tank. These are super easy to maintain and when you do need to clean them and maintain them, it's as easy as pulling them out of the tank, getting a five gallon bucket of your own tank water and just squishing it around in the water to kind of get some of the particles out of it. If you do go with a sponge filter, remember you're also gonna need an air pump and some tubing to connect the two. The air pump will, the air pump is essentially what allows the sponge filter to do its thing. It's gonna pump air into it that will end up going from the sponge filter itself and it will the air will raise to the surface of the water and that creates a suction and that suction pulls in the debris. So that's how those sponge filters work. Alternatively, you could also go with your standard hang on the back filter or a small canister filter. You'll just need to be mindful of the output flow to make sure it's not knocking your little friend around. So if you have a canister filter, those have tend to have spray bars that can create a little bit too much flow for your beta and the hang on the back filters, those tend to be adjustable. So if you do go with one of those, just adjust them to the point where your beta fish isn't being knocked around. Because if he's getting knocked around with that big finish, he's, he's going to be unha unhappy and he's going to be stressed out and he's probably not going to do very well. Uh, your standard hang on the back filters and your canister filters both work by the means of biological and mechanical filtration. One added bonus to them is if you want to, you can add something like carbon to your filter media, and you can now have three stages of filtration, biological, mechanical, and chemical filtration. With that being said, I don't use any chemical filtration in any of my tanks, and I have eight fish tanks running for years now, and I just, I just prefer not to use chemical filtration in my tanks. I, I don't think it's necessary. Now with all this work, you're going to want to be able to see your new friend and appreciates its colors and the decoration you put in the tank. So you're going to want to buy a light for your tank. I recommend a decent light. I recommend a night crew light. They're very affordable and they're on Amazon, easily to get. You can have them delivered in a day or two. There's a few different models. Any light will do, but I personally prefer the night crew brand of lights. So if you're looking into lights, especially if you want to end up Diving into the world of aquarium plants, I strongly recommend the Nike Crew brand of lights. It's a great entry point. So now you have all the basic technology you need to maintain a healthy environment for your beta fish. Now comes the fun part. You're going to want to start putting some things into that tank. 
This will most likely come down to your personal preference. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what you should put in your tank, but you're going to need some kind of substrate for the bottom of the tank, like sand or gravel. Not only does it look pleasing, but you have beneficial bacteria that will colonize there. Uh, you want to add your substrate before you add water to the tank or else you're going to have an absolute mess. So the first step, once you get all your equipment, don't plug in the equipment yet, but once you get all your equipment, you're going to want to add your substrate. Once you have your substrate in, you want to decorate the tank now. And again, this comes down to pers personal preference. As I like to think, all tanks are like a living piece of artwork. That's what I always tell my wife. No, we can set up another tank because it's a living piece of artwork. With that said, you want to include either live or fake plants. Again, personal preference, you don't have to. Uh, I prefer live plants, but for a beginner, it can be daunting. So fake plants are fine. But just make sure if you have a beta, if you're doing the beta tank, you want to make sure that you have soft silk plants because those tougher plastic ones have been known to damage their extravagant fins. So again, if you're going to go a fake plant route, go with something that when you touch it, it feels soft so that it's not going to irritate your beta fish's fins. You can also add decorations like driftwood and stones, rocks. These all help create a real natural looking setup. But I know some people will set up beta tanks for their kids and they want it to be colorful and have little castles. That's perfectly fine. It's your tank. However you want it to look is up to you. So just set up the tank the way you want it to look. However, whatever's pleasing to you, that's the way to go. The only caveat here is to not place any decorations that you think your fish might get stuck in. It happens all the time. Little SpongeBob houses, the fish will swim in and get stuck. Now, enjoy this part of the hobby. This is my favorite part of the hobby is decorating, designing a tank. It's a lot of fun, and I tend to switch it up every couple months. I get in there and, and redecorate my tanks. Now your tank's all decorated. You have all your equipment. You're feeling really good. Now it's time to make sure that you have fish food for your new pet. I found that betas are not very picky eaters, and they'll eat pretty much all types of flakes and pellets, and then you can even get frozen treats like brine shrimp to give them on, on occasion. My advice here is, again, they'll eat pretty much anything, but try to pick a brand of food that doesn't have uh, any type of meal as its main ingredient. So you, you can easily reference this on the back of the canisters of food while you're buying them. Okay, so we have our food, we have our equipment, our tank is decorated. Now it's time to fill the tank up or to flood the tank, as they say. So just keep in mind when you're adding water to your tank, you're going to want to do it slowly so you don't mess up all your decorations. And you also need to keep in mind that pretty much all city water has potentially harmful chemicals that are like chlorine and chloramines. Those are not good for your fish. So you're going to want to get yourself a dechlorinator. These can be bought at all your local fish stores. And what they do is they just remove the chlorine and the chloramines, and they can also, a lot of them will remove nitrates. So this is essential. You need to make sure that when you're filling up the tank for the first time, and when you're doing water changes and top-offs, that you add dechlorinator to the water that's going into the tank. If you don't remove the chlorine and the chloramine, it's going to irritate the fish, and it's going to damage your uh, beneficial bacteria colonies. On that note, I advise everyone to grab a water test kit to make sure that their water chemistry is healthy. It sounds more complicated than it really is. You can buy a fancy kit like the API Freshwater Master Test Kit, which runs about 50 bucks. Alternatively, you can buy uh, the cheaper paper test kits. So there's like paper test strips that you just dip into the tank and then you match up the colors to the bottle and that'll tell you where your levels are at. The paper ones are a little le less accurate, but they still work all the same. They'll give you a rough idea of, of where your uh, nitrates, nitrites and ammonia levels are at. So make sure you pick up a water test kit. You want to have a good idea of what's going on with the water chemistry in your tank. So here's the last step in the process. And this is probably the most controversial process in the entire hobby. People have a lot, a lot of opinions about this. And that is cycling your tank. Cycling, cycling your tank basically means getting the tank to a place where you have colonies of nitrifying bacteria or quote unquote good bacteria. The good bacteria will consume ammonia and nitrites, which are produced by your fish, fish waste and the food that you're putting in to feed your fish. And the good bacteria, bacteria will colonize every inch of your tank, but it, it tends to concentrate in the substrate and the filter media. Without good bacteria performing its job, you're going to have a dead fish. And remember, good bacteria will consume your ammonia and your nitrites, and it turns it into less harmful chemical 
called nitrates. So you definitely need to make sure you have a good colony of your nitrifying bacteria. Now there are two approaches when it comes to cycling your tank. And in my opinion, they both work just, just fine, but this is a controversial point. So I'll go over what the general kind of Reddit, the people on the internet will say that you must do to cycle your tank. And this is the first step, or this is your first option rather. So you can fill up your tank, get everything going, and you start ghost feeding your tank, which means you're sprinkling small amounts of food in there to start the cycling process. They recommend that you do this for about two weeks, and this is going to start your nitrogen cycle. This works by slowly building up a colony of good bacteria in the tank, and this is to establish your cycle, where the good bacteria consumes your ammonia and nitrites, turning it into less harmful nitrates. The second option, which I prefer, is to do an instant cycle. This is where you buy a product that has live bacteria in a bottle, live nitrifying bacteria in a bottle, and you pour this directly into your tank. And the live bacteria will jumpstart your nitrogen cycle. And all you have to do is make sure you have a fish or your ghost feeding, something that's going to create ammonia and nitrites so that the nitrifying bacteria that you added through the bottle can start the process and start to break it down. Again, this is a route I go every single time. I never have fish loss. You just want to make sure that if you're going the instant cycle route, that you do have a test kit so that you can check every day or two for the first week to see if your cycle is being maintained or not. But like I said, this is the way I go. The choice is yours. It's your pet. It's your tank. If you want to go with the first one of waiting two weeks and ghost feeding your tank, to cycle it, that's perfectly fine. And if you want to go with the second option of the instant cycle with bottled nitrifying bacteria, that's also going to work for you. So now that you followed all these steps, now it's time to add your new pet beta. So let's do a quick little recap though. You need your tank, your heater, your filter, and a light source. Then you're going to have a fun time decorating your tank and you're finally going to add your water. Once the water is in, you want to add your dechlorinator and decide what cycle process you want to take. Then depending on whichever process you choose, it's time to add your beautiful beta to the tank and enjoy the peace and relaxation that owning a fish and fish keeping brings. You'll spend a lot of time sitting in front of the tank, just enjoying your new friend. Just remember to keep that water topped up and to do your water changes as needed if your ammonia or your nitrate levels start to climb. And when a water change is done, make sure that you add a little bit more of that dechlorinator so that you don't ruin your cycle and you don't irritate your fish with the chlorine and the chloramines. Well, all, I hope you found this video really helpful and feel free to reach out to me in the comments if you have any questions. I'm always super happy to talk with people and answer questions about this hobby. And please make sure to like and subscribe if you found this content useful. And also I'll have a uh, new video coming out where I'm completely rescaping my existing five gallon beta tank. And we're going to go with a non-filtered, dirted beta setup. It's going to be a natural setup. And it's, it's just going to be wonderful. You can check out my other video where I talk a little bit about it. So anyways, good luck to everybody and have fun and happy fish keeping.